this is Mrs McTaggart. In this video, we are going to look at equations with fractions. And there's a couple of inequalities thrown in there for good measure as well. So what I've got is I've got nine examples and I've literally just stolen them from some past papers. Now, before I do these, there is more than one way to do some of them. Some of your teachers might have taught you slightly differently. I'm just going for a really consistent approach, which my class do for every single equation the minute they see a fraction. So the, the method I use is to say, first thing we have to do is eliminate any fractions. And to do that, you multiply everything by a common denominator. If you have got a fraction, remember a fraction is essentially just a divide sum. So to counteract that, counteract the divide by multiplying by whatever that denominator is, and it will get rid of the fraction. When there's more than one fraction, you have to find a denominator or a number that's common to both that we can multiply by that will get rid of both of them. And I've said everything because someone always forgets to multiply everything in my class. So here is my first example. Now this one only has one fraction, which has a denominator of two. So what we've got on the right hand side is we've got x take away five divided by two. So to counteract that, we're going to times everything by two. Now I write this above everything, it feels a wee bit silly, but do you know what? It helps remind you to multiply absolutely everything. And I will stress that word, everything, all the time. Okay? So if you multiply everything by 2, the first term becomes 6x. The 1 turns into 2. And the times by 2 cancels out with that divide by 2 there, leaving you simply x minus 5 on the top. And from there, you've just got a very simple equation. We're going to take letters to left numbers to the right. So we end up with 6x take away x equals, now watch, there's negative 5 already there on the right-hand side. So put that down first. First come, first serve. So it was already there. So minus 5 goes first, plus 2 becomes minus 2. And then if you tidy that up, 6 take away 1 leaves you with 5x. Minus 5 minus 2 is minus 7. Now, these don't always divide nicely, so remember the rule is you have to undo the times by 5 in front of the x, so you are dividing by 5. And I would just leave it as negative 7 over 5. Don't try and turn it into a decimal. That's perfectly okay. Let's look at the next one. So this one has got two fractions. We've got a 2 and a 3 in the bottom. So times and by 2, we get rid of the first fraction. Times and by 3, we get rid of the second one. But I need to think of a number that would get rid of both. So lowest common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So I'm going to times everything by 6. And I'm going to write... Oops, it's easy. I'm going to write times by 6 above each and every term. So when I times by 6, there's different ways to look at this wee bit. The 6 and the 2 will cancel, leaving a 3. So really, the first thing is going to end up being a 3x. On the second one, the 6 and the 3 will cancel, leaving a 2. So that bracket will be multiplied by 2. And then 4 times 6 is 24. And it's usually that number on the end that people mess up and don't multiply by. So different ways of looking at this as well. You notice I did some scoring out with a red pen. You could just do a good old divide by the bottom times by the top. So if you start with this, on the first term, if you start with a 6, divide by 2 is 3, so you're left with 3x. On the second one, start with a 6, divide by the 3 is 2, so you've got a 2 to go in front of the bracket. I'll try and do a, a, a mixture of the two ways as I do these. So what's left to do is then multiply out this bracket. So this gives us negative 2x minus 2 times 1 is minus 2 greater than 24. I'll do a quick tidy up. 3 take away 2 is 1x. I'm going to take that minus 2 over. So 24 was already there, so it goes first, plus 2. So x is greater than 26. So we've done the exact same method as before, only um, we've got an inequality sign running down the middle. Third example is similar, but this time it's a fraction equals a fraction. So Again, let's find a number we can multiply by that will get rid of the fractions. There is another method on this one, which I'll show you once I've done the, the continued method of eliminating the fractions. So 3 and 5, lowest common multiple there is 15. So I'm going to times this side by 15 and this side by 15. Now 15 and the 3 will cancel out, leaving a 5. The 15 and the 5 will cancel out, leaving a 3 here. So I'm left with 5m on the left. And 3 bracket 1 minus m on the right. If I times that out, I have 5m equals 3 minus 3m. 
Let's bring the 3m over. So I've got 5m plus 3m equals 3. 8m equals 3, which doesn't divide nicely. So we leave it as 3 divided by 8 or 3 over 8. Now, essentially, this could have just been reached by doing cross multiplication, which is fine if you've seen things like the sign rule before. If you haven't, you might not have met cross multiplication before. Basically, you can do 5 times m to get the 5m, which I've got here, and you can do 3 times a bracket to get 3 times a bracket that way. But remember what I said at the beginning, I'm trying to use a consistent approach for every single equation with fractions. Get rid of the fractions by multiplying by a common multiple. Okay, three terms in this one, two fractions again. Two and five, lowest common multiple of two and five is 10. So I'm going to write times 10, times 10, and times 10 above everything. So on the first one, 10 divides by the two, leaving five here. So I've got 5x. Uh, one times 10 is just 10, so 5x minus 10. And in this one, the 10 divides by the five, leaving a two. So I have two times the top line. And I'll put a bracket around it um, rather than multiply it out and at the same time and make a mistake. So I'm left with 5x minus 10 equals 6 minus 2x. And then it's changed sides with everything. So 5x minus becomes a plus 2x. 6 was there on the right hand side already. And minus 10 becomes plus 10. Tidy that up. We have 7x equals 17. Oh, 17? 16, which doesn't divide again, so you end up with 16 over 7. So don't be put off with equations and fractions. It's very difficult to get numbers that work out nicely when you're making these up. So it's very likely you will have fractions for your final answers. Okay, this one again, um, a common multiple here of 4 and 3 would be 12. So we're going to times by 12, times by 12, and times by 12. Still writing that everywhere. So in the first one, 12 and the 4 cancel, leave a 3. So that becomes 3x. Um, a third of 12 there is 4, or the 12 and 3 cancel, leaving a 4. Either way, this is 4. And 5 times 12 is 60. From there, you've just got a very simple first year equation. 3x is less than 60 plus 4. 3x is less than 64, which doesn't divide by 3. So we leave it as 64 over 3. Okay, we've got another inequality here. I actually made it an inequality because I, I sat and worked through it and realised oh, this would have been a good inequality one. So um, there's a couple of options in this one when you're thinking of how to eliminate the fractions. You could think, oh, 3 and 6, 12. There is actually a lower one which doesn't always jump out, which is 6. 6 would counteract, it would get rid of the 3 and the 6. So I'm going to times everything by 6 here. So times 6 times 6 times 6. So this one, basically we're doing two thirds of six, right? Now think of that, of loads of different ways of doing it. You could do two times six is 12, 12 divided by three is four. You could do six divided by three is two, two times two is four. Either way, it becomes a four X. So we have four X here. Um, the six and the six cancel out. So you've got takeaway five is greater than or equal to 12 X. If I take my letters to one side, I have 4x minus 12x is greater than or equal to, now that will become positive 5. So you have negative 8x greater than or equal to 5. Right, 5 doesn't divide by 8, so we leave it as 5 over 8. The minus, technically, it can go anywhere on the fraction. It can go in front of the 5, it can go in front of the 8. I just like it out the front. So I take it to the top. Now, because I divided by a negative here, your arrow flips. So you have to flip your arrow and make it face the other way. Some people may prefer at this stage here to make their letters positive and leave it as minus 5 is greater than or equal to the 8x over there. Um, and then you don't have to flip the arrow at all. So you can leave it as minus 5 over 8 instead of an x. But notice in both of these, the arrows point to the x. So they are equivalent both acceptable answers. Okay, so this one, there's another way to do this, which I'll show at the side, but let's go with the method I'll be doing for them all, times by the denominator. So I'm going to times everything by x. So times by x here counteracts the divide by x. So you're left with 2 plus 1x equals 6x. And then you might want to move your letters over. So I will do x take away 6x 
equals, now that positive 2 will come negative 2, I then end up with negative 5 equals negative 2. Um, double negative there, I'll cancel out when they divide, negative divided by negative or positive, 2 divided by 5 will leave us 2 over 5. Now the other way we could have done here is just move the 1 first of all, and said, right, well, 2x equals 6 take away 1, which is 5. And then just cross multiply. 2 equals 5x. 2 over 5 equals x. But as I said, I'm sticking to this one method for all my examples. Nearly there. Nearly there. One more. Two more. Right. Denominator is 4. So we're going to times by 4. Times by 4. And times by 4. Now, I like this one because it's a bit trickier with this added bracket in it. So times everything by 4. You get 8x. They cancel out. So you're just left with negative of your bracket, which I'm going to leave as a bracket just now. And 4 times 4 is 16. Now remember, there is a minus in front of this bracket, so we're secretly multiplying out by negative 1. So we have negative 3x. Double negative turns it to plus 1 equals 16. Tidy up. That gives us 5x equals 16 subtract 1. 5x is 15. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Our first one with a nice answer. Hurrah! <laughs> okay, now my last one is a bit more complicated. It is an equation with a fraction, but they've not given you the equation. We're going to make it up ourselves. Now, there was one almost identical to this in this year's paper, the 2022 paper, but you had a rectangle and a triangle instead. So what you're told in the question is that both these triangles are of equal area. We have defined x. So good old basic triangle, area equals half base times height. And these are equal. So the first one would be a half times x over 2 times 1, half base times height, equals the second one, half times base times height. Now I've just written it out that doesn't look very pretty, does it? Okay, let's tidy this up a bit. A half times x over 2 times the top numbers times the bottom numbers. That will just give us x over 4. The times 1 won't do anything. So this becomes x over 4 equals... I'm going to bring that 3 to the front and that will become 3 over 2 bracket x minus 1. So I've tidied up my two expressions for my areas. Next, how do we rid of them? Well, we times by a common multiple. So I'm going to times everything by 4 because that would get rid of the 4 and the 2. So the 4 and the 4 will cancel out, leaving an x here. The 3 quarters, uh, sorry, 3 over 2 times 4. Well, I'm going to do my same method as before. The 4 and the 2 cancels out. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So I end up with 3 times 2. So a 6 in front of the bracket. Multiply out the bracket. 6x minus 6. Um, I'll take everything to the left. So that gives me minus 5x equals minus 6. And then, if you solve that, double negative turns it to positive. X is 6 over 5. Now, you might think that looks quite a strange answer, but I have substituted it in back into the equations. And actually, if you plug it back in as 1.2, which is quite easy to do as a decimal, um, both answers come out with an area of 0 0.3, so it is the right answer. Um, but that's me, whistle stop two of all the equations with fractions. I hope this has helped. As I said, remember there are other methods for some of them. I am trying to make things as simple as possible. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.